Hey y'all, it's Melissa here at Twin Oaks Family Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. Just doing an update for you on the meat chickens, Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens. This group is 433 birds. They are 10 days old as we're recording this and uh, been working in their pen here, just doing some maintenance and they're doing great. So while we're looking at them, kind of tell you how the last flock turned out. We were a lot of mixed feelings about the last flock. It wasn't the outcome we wanted, but it was the outcome we saw developing as we were raising them. So before we look at the flock, I'm going to tell you some of kind of the housekeeping maintenance we were just doing. This kind of gives y'all an inside look at what it's like taking care of a flock of meat chickens. So this is on a scale, as I said, of about 400 plus. You can take all the same kind of things that we do and scale them up or scale them down you know if you want to raise 50 or if you want to raise 100 you can take these same practices and kind of like scale it down you know divided by four divided by eight to get to whatever number of birds you want to work with so the birds are kind of in a resting phase right now uh, we've filled feeders so actually have 20 of these tray feeders down on their brooder space floor for them right now and I don't know, 20 of those at a time holds probably about 25 pounds of feed. But this group of birds is, I've been saying, flying through the feed sacks. They're, they're eating really, really well. Their appetite is heavy, which is exactly what we want to see in meat chickens. They, they get a lot of grief from people about being heavy feeders, about being greedy at the feeder, about being lazy even and just real content as you see one there to pull up to the feeder and sit down and and just consume feed and and they'd actually fall asleep there and then wake up again later and just pick right back up eating so you know they they get a lot of bad reputation on that but that's exactly what we want to see in our meat chickens if we don't see that we don't get the outcome that we need to get from the project so you know if you're raising meat chickens like these Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens for your household meat supply you want them to have an appetite you want them to consume food you want them to be eating I'm going to give you a look here at our little Dotson this is Tanner and uh, you know there's strong feelings sometimes one way or the other about letting your domestic pets around your livestock we have domestic pets, we're around our livestock, our domestic pets are with us a lot of the time, so they're around our livestock. And it's really it's really kind of comical with this little Dotson. Uh, their heritage, you know, is uh, German and they're badger hunters. So they're curious, they're content to go into burrows and uh, they would be pretty scrappy, I would think, to be able to take on a badger, but this, this particular individual, he, well, he's found himself something there to entertain himself with, but he is very content around chickens, and I would have never expected this from him, but he almost shows like a herding inclination. He, he especially helps us when the egg chickens are allowed some supervised free-ranging uh, when it's time for them to go home. You know, he'll kind of set a perimeter and set out at it and, and, help us move those chickens toward their chicken coop if they're not getting there you know as quickly as we need them to or if they're kind of straggling and then even with these birds you know he'll come in with us and and check them out and and kind of see that everything is okay before he goes on about his own business but very content to just set and and kind of watch you know that everything seems all right so it's been interesting with that but um this group, like I said, flying through the feed sacks, I need to get a count from my husband and sons. I usually take care of morning chores and daytime checks, and then I work away from home most evenings of the week. So they're doing the evening checks. So a lot of times when the bags of feed get opened and we, we gotta break out a new one, it, ha it just happens to fall when they're doing feeding. So I don't have an exact count on how much feed we've used 10 days in with this set of 433 Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens. But I do know that we're emptying feed sacks. Like I just, I just emptied one when I filled all these and opened up a new one. So uh, I'm not even gonna guess. I need to find out from them and I'll, I'll catch y'all up to date. But overall, start to finish, 
over about five to six weeks time what we expect a meat bird to eat. So each bird as an individual on average, we expect a meat bird to consume 10 pounds of 22% protein complete feed in order to successfully go from start to finish and get to the size we want to be able to process them or have them processed into poultry, even into just whole chickens or into custom cuts, you know, from the whole chicken. So, so about 10 pounds of feed per bird start to finish would be the reference point that we tell you uh, if you're wanting to raise birds like this too, to plan on. And, and we think that that's a really good reference point. And, and here is an example, a case in point example uh, that kind of, kind of tells us what happens when we don't get 10 pounds of feed in them. The last flock that we raised just prior to this one, don't know if I mentioned the date we're recording on. This is September 13th, 2024. Uh, the flock that we just finished, just prior to this one, we did use a shorter production time with them. We normally raise these birds for 42 days or as close as we can get to 42 days without going too much over. So that flock, we wanted to try to raise a flock in 35 days, five weeks. And that flock that was just prior to this one was exactly 35 days. And we're, we're kind of, for us, we're kind of locked into that because we set processing dates and we set hatch dates a year ahead and a year at a time, okay? So once we get those processing dates and hatch dates and, and the production length from start to finish, we are kind of locked into that with our birds to, for the most part. So we knew that flock was gonna be 35 days and we would get to see, well, how does that turn out? What is that like? I'm gonna turn the camera around. So in that flock, it so happened that in addition to being the shortest production length we've ever tried, they also had some things just go the wrong way that set of birds did. So um, the main things was, for example, they got delayed in shipping. So they had an extra long time in their shipping boxes. And that created a situation where more or less when they're just hatched, you've kind of got this window of time, like 20 to 24 hours, where you really need to get water into them and feed into them to really get a strong start to the function of their internal organs, particularly their digestive system, because all that is, is just beginning to function. So their digestive system, their immune system, and their thermoregulation, their ability to you know tolerate temperature fluctuation. Uh, you, you've got this window of time where you need to get water into them to hydrate them well and contribute to cell function and then get feed into them to give that digestive system, you know, a, a start. So with this, with that flock getting delayed, we, we kind of missed that window. And so once we could get water and food into them, they were already lagging in progress and in development, okay, physically. So uh, in addition to that, we know that this kind of chicken, Cornish rock cross meat chickens, are very sensitive to temperature, real feel, and to humidity and to temperature fluctuations, okay? So that, that same flock that had the holdup in shipping that was also on a really short timetable to start with, temperatures were just wrong. You know, it was either, it was always either like 20 degrees too hot for them or 20 degrees too cold for them or 40 degrees too hot for them and 30 degrees too cold for them. It was never just right was the problem. It was never just right. So they never had the advantage of just near perfect conditions and their body just being able to do what the chicken's body needs to do. And so with our setup, as far as temperature, we, we really are at the mercy of ambient conditions outside and we can use targeted warmth when temperatures are cool from heat lamps that we install and we can use targeted air movement to produce a cooling effect when temperatures are too high. We do that with fans, electric fans that we plug in and we do that with our big doorways. But nonetheless, when, when the temperature swings so extreme, even the measures that we have to work with fluctuating temperatures can fall short. So for that five week production flock, 
like everything was just bad. It just, it was all wrong, you know, start to finish. It was all wrong and we did the best we could, but we ended up with whole chickens. We were going for whole chickens in the freezer, four pounds, uniform across the flock for the most part. We ended up with chickens about three, three and a half pounds across the flock. Pretty uniform, but smaller than we wanted um, from that flock. But as I said, we had the delay in shipping. We had the, the temperature fluctuations that were really extreme that we couldn't offset. And all of that set that flock back on its development, on its progress. It also set it back on its feed consumption. And this was the point we were making about get 10 pounds of feed in them start to finish to succeed with meat birds. Uh, what that five week old flock taught us, we only got about seven and a half pounds of feed per bird into them. And they didn't quite finish where we wanted them to. Now, the whole chickens and the custom cuts of poultry that we got out of that flock are excellent. They are excellent. They're they're just smaller than what we what we want and what we wanted. And and the the issue with that for us, uh, we take ours you know to the processor. Here's the thing, it costs me just about the same to pay my processing bill whether those chickens made five pound whole chickens or six pound whole chickens or turned out as three pound whole chickens. And and the problem for me as a producer in a small commercial operation with the three pound chicken is what? I'm charging the same pound price, the same per pound price on that three pound chicken. So obviously I'm gonna make make less, you know, gross income on that three or even even four pound chicken than I am on a five or six pound chicken. But I basically still paid the same as the processor. Okay. So so obviously that's not gonna be our best flock on paper or on the back pocket either so um so all that all that being said to to sort of emphasize to y'all if you're raising these meat birds all of that being said to emphasize we get that that 10 pound per bird feed rate from experience and it holds true start to finish to get a, a good successful finish on a meat bird we want to get 10 pounds of feed per bird in them and and we can vouch for we had a flock we only got seven and a half pounds of feed into per bird and and they finished smaller and so you know it's still good meat it's just not going to be as successful a finish for us now if if what you want is a three pound bird that will like fit for rotisserie in an air fryer these birds are going to be the perfect size for that that came off of of that five week flock. And I still contend, I still contend you could do a 35 day flock, maybe, you know, maybe go out to 38 days, kind of just to give yourself a few days cushion. But I still think you could do a 35 day flock and, and finish them. The problem we had with that flock was all of that developmental uh, disruption affected their appetite. And that's why we only got seven and a half pounds of feed in them and not 10 pounds of feed in them per bird because their appetite never got heavy. And and that's where we started out, you know, with showing you this group today saying, um, they'll just, you know, they, they get a lot of grief for it and they get a bad rap for it. Cornish rock cross meat chickens do, but they will, they'll pull up to the feeder, eat, fall asleep, wake up and start eating again. And they're perfectly content with that. And they get they get a lot of grief for being a lazy bird because of that. But it's it's not that they're lazy. It's that so much of their energy is going into growth that they've got to eat a lot of, cons of feed. They've got to consume a lot of feed and they got to rest a lot in order to support all that growth. So they got to be at the feeder a lot. They got to have a lot of access to food. And, and then when they're not eating, they, they need to be resting so that the body can do those internal processes to turn that feed into meat. So that's why I say, you know, you want to see a heavy appetite in your meat birds. Because if you don't see appetite in your meat birds, honestly, it's going to be hard to successfully finish them. Because that, that appetite, that drive to eat, is one of the things that distinguishes meat birds. So, so anyway, so I do need to find out exactly how many feed sacks have we been through with this flock. But as I said, there's 20 of these little feeders down on the floor. Uh, there's at least 25 pound of feed in them all together. And we've got 
10 of these single gallon waters down on the floor at a time right now and we're filling those about three times a day so there's about 30 gallon of water going in them every day and that's all of that quantity wise is just gonna ramp up and compound because actually their appetite is really good we're seeing them in a, a thrive we've got got a friend we're seeing them thrive you know appetite is great but we're gonna see that appetite like double okay and then then we'll probably see it double again and and as we go through production so that's kind of the way it works with these birds you you kind of have a, a starting point and they should have a heavy appetite really from the beginning you should notice it in the first week where you know their feed consumption picks up and then it'll like double you know toward the middle of production and then you know right at the end of production probably in the last week you'll see it almost probably double again so that's what we're expecting to have happen with this group of birds and and they they're off to just a great start it's just so much better than than the last flock but like i said you know i I don't know that the problem on my last flock was 35 days. I, I think we had some developmental disruption just because of, of really not being able to get the water and food into them, you know, within a shorter window um, from, from their hatching. So, so these, these things happen, you know, when you're raising livestock, you, you're going to have unexpected things happen, but, um, the other thing with that that 35 day flock i don't know that we'd have been better off having more time with them because with them having that rough start and rough development as they grew when they would hit a growth spurt then you know their their hearts might not have held up to the demand of that growth spurt so with this flock of birds i feel really encouraged that we're gonna um see them do really well they've got we've got 41 days with this group so I expect, you know, at the end, when when we have them made into poultry, we'll uh, be at that normal outcome that we usually have of like probably five pound whole chickens with this group. So, so any questions on them, let us know. I also put new bedding in here today. So we just use pine shavings. That's what we've put down in here. Um, we still have our shipping boxes. And like some of, some of the feed sacks, that's just some of the feed sacks we've already emptied. We typically burn those things to dispose of them. And you know, we've had like drought-like conditions in Ohio. Um, and, and many states in the United States have this summer. Many states are on like their third straight summer of drought-like conditions in the USA. Uh, but we have had drought-like conditions in Southeast Ohio and in Central Ohio, um, probably throughout the state for this year. So, in fact, um, we're under really a burn ban right now for, for safety reasons. And, and that's logical. It's common sense. You know, it's very dry, very dry conditions outdoors. So, uh, it's a, it would be a dangerous time to have an outdoor fire. So, we are on a burn ban. So, we're, we're currently not disposing of things by burning. So, we're, we're kind of waiting it out. Um, maybe we'll get to a point where we can dispose of those boxes and feed sacks by burning and uh and have those out of here but like i said i did just put bedding down so this is fresh beddings pine shavings so this is a a space um probably about i want to say about 12 feet across and 25 feet east to west and just a thin layer of, of uh, pine shavings it took two bags to cover this area so maybe about 250 square feet I used two bags of pine shavings in okay but these birds are doing great 10 days old uh, will this is September 13th that we're recording probably won't upload this until um, September 16th or, or we'll get it uploaded kind of for release to members ahead of schedule and then it'll release to the public on on monday the 16th and then we'll keep you posted on how this flock's doing but they're resting because they're growing and and then they get up and go eat <laughs> so you can see they're getting their feathers um and we gave them a little more room today also we bumped that temporary wall out more so we're all the way out to the barn wall on that side so we'll probably be 
bumping this wall out some more and we may be changing over to some big water soon. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Join us again at Twin Oaks Farm Poultry on YouTube to see how real good chicken gets made.